I think Beatrice has given us a beginning point for the entire region. What I want to talk about is the Honduran case. Um, and my beginning point here is to address two questions. The first one is, why are children coming in such large numbers from Honduras to the US? And the second one is, um, what are the kinds of, of moves or actions that might change the conditions that are causing that very dangerous journey to be more attractive for these children than staying in the country? And a couple of numbers, I, I think we're all overwhelmed by the numbers, but I, I do want to mention that um, the Honduran, uh, the number of Honduran unaccompanied children that entered the U.S. on the southern border be between 20, well, last year and this year, it's fiscal years, federal fiscal years, so they run from October to September went up dramatically, almost doubled from tw fiscal year 2011, which ended in September of 2012, from 29,000 to in the most recently completed fiscal year, 48,000. So just on the numbers, we're looking at an astronomical increase. But it's not just the num sheer numbers, the proportion of unaccompanied children entering the US in the southern border that came from Honduras went up in a percentage wise from uh, about 4.5% of the population before 2012 to 7.5% since 2012. These are all US government numbers. So what we're seeing is, across the region certainly, more and more children, unaccompanied children, entering the country, as well as children traveling with adults. And the numbers have increased in both of these places, but the proportion coming from Honduras, and the absolute numbers coming from Honduras are extraordinary. And if you read any news coverage, you know what the simple answer is that's being packaged. Honduras is a violent country. Well, my friends in Honduras want me to say Honduras is not a violent country. Violence in Honduras is um, specifically impacting people in certain places, and that violence is not because of some innate violent characteristics of Honduras, but is a fairly direct result of the 2009 coup in Honduras, and the lack of civil um, structures that survived after the coup and after the government that followed. When you have a country where the police are not, in fact, the people who will enforce the laws and protect you, but are the people who will um, murder you, even if you're the son of the rector of the National University, and extort from you, then your trust in there being any kind of civil society to help you goes away. Um, moreover, those members of the police and security forces who uh, undertake these kinds of activities um, benefit from virtual Im impunity in a country where militarization, the kind of militarization we saw in Ferguson, has thoroughly pervaded the populace. The army now polices the streets of San Pedro Sula, where I used to live and work. The army now polices the streets of Tegucigalpa. And prior to 2009, that was against the Constitution. So again, with Beatrice, I would say we actually have to look at some more complex histories of relationships between the US and uh, Central America in order to account for what is going on. And that should then cause us a little bit of uh, a pause before we solve the problem in the way the US has actually proposed, which is by sending more military and security aid. And in the last minute and a half that I have, I want to give you the numbers from the presidential fact sheet. Um, regional rule of law funding, $65 million. Regional law enforcement and security funding, $96 million, all being addressed to try and change the flood of children coming up. Um, direct security and governance, $161.5 million. And this is for the region as a whole versus 130 million for non-security, what we would normally think of as general developmental aid. If you add those numbers up, it's very clear that the US is funding an exaggerated security force buildup. And the reason is because of the drug trade. The US has uh, established these kinds of policies and funding priorities in a vain attempt to stem the flood of cocaine, even though in fact the amount of cocaine coming into the US has apparently gone down, um, and even though reputable um, social science studies have shown that when you put this kind of investment in to try and interdict uh, drug trafficking, what you do is you increase the violence 
between those who remain behind and are competing with each other to control what remains of the lucrative trade. Um, for Honduras specifically, then, I want to return to violence. Violence exists. Violence is a problem in Honduras, but it's a specific problem, and it's a problem that actually maps very precisely, as a number of news media have shown, and as the UN High Commission on Refugees has shown, to the origins of the children who have come in this most recent peak. The children are not coming from random places. They are coming from Tegucigalpa and San Pedro Sula, El Progreso, and other cities in the north and west of the country that are actually now largely controlled politically by the, uh, the drug cartels in the region. And I'm happy to talk more about any of these themes in the remaining part of the discussion. <laughs> 